Welcome to the Radio Amateur Channel and what I have for you today is this 6 meter biquad design and I was hoping to have it ready sooner for the uh, sporadic E season on 6 meters but due to uh, things to get ready and done at the house and uh, in the garden and then having weather that didn't cooperate I wasn't able to get it uh, done and uh, get anything put together here on YouTube for you until recently. So I will give you uh, all the details uh, as far as what you'll need to put it together and what my results were. For horizontal polarization, which I have it configured for, the antenna length will be about 13.88 feet or about 14 feet tall. And uh, you'll mount it with uh, rope at the top and the bottom and you'll need a sway rope uh, and probably if you can get it uh, up at least 10 to 15 feet off the ground uh, that would be pretty good. Uh, you'll have two spreaders that are about seven feet one and a half inches long. I used furring strip but if you can find some uh, fiberglass uh, rod, uh, maybe about a half inch in diameter, that would probably work, although you'll have to uh, support it with rope. And then you'll need uh, to remember to run your coax perpendicular to the antenna. Now, the disadvantages for the antenna are that it'll require at least one spreader per loop, and that's going to add a little bit of extra weight. And you'll need two support ropes, like I said, with insulators at the top and the bottom and some ropes to support inside uh, the antenna and then you'll need a sway rope uh, to keep it in position and if you mount it on a tower or a uh, tree then uh, you'll have to play around with it a little bit because uh, probably if you have it close to a tower you may get some interaction so uh, I did it from a tree branch and it seemed to work pretty good. As a matter of fact, the SWR at 50.1, which is where I uh, had uh, designed it for, was about 1.3 to 1. Now that could have been uh, a little bit higher because I didn't have it up uh, 10 to 15 feet. I only had it up about uh, 6 feet or so off the ground. But actually it was pretty broad, um, as it should be. It was more resonant, uh, higher in frequency at about uh, 750 kC higher. But like I said, that could have been due to the way I mounted it. So uh, you'll have to experiment around with it, uh, but it should come out uh, with a fairly uh, good SWR around uh, 50.1, close to what I had, or fairly close. And I have some close-ups of the uh, center insulator and how I uh, put that together. Now the items you'll need are some 14 gauge stranded wire. You'll need uh, two spreaders. Like I said I use furring strips but you could use fiberglass rod. And then for the center insulator of the antenna I used about a 6 by 6 inch cutting board center insulator uh, which is about a quarter inch thickness and I think I bought that at Walmart and cut it up uh, to those dimensions and you have plenty left from the one I bought for maybe some other insulators if you want to use it for that and then you'll need two uh, egg type insulators and you'll need uh, either like uh, two number six or two number eight machine screws if you're going to have it outside permanently then you might want to get uh, stainless steel hardware and you'll need uh, a couple of washers and I used uh, six nuts to kind of lock things in uh, so they don't come undone and then you'll need uh, six uh, ring type crimp on terminals for the ends and then some cable ties uh, you'll see by looking at my pictures what I did there to hold the uh, hold the wires a little bit more uh, taut so they don't get yanked on and break. And then uh, what you could also do instead of the uh, two machine screws is put an SO239 in the center instead. But I was trying to save some money and that way you save money on an SO239 and a PL259. 
and it doesn't make too much difference uh, as far as connecting it uh, because the jumper I had just had the ring terminals on the end and the PL259 on the other and you can use RG8 or RG8X. Uh, I used an RG8X uh, jumper. Uh, you probably want to keep it a little bit uh, shorter and just run it to a trunk line of like some kind of RG8. Uh, although you could use the RG8X it would just uh, be a little bit more lossy uh, but that's always the possibility or if you use a portable that'd probably work fine. So anyway and I think I mentioned you'll need a sway rope to keep it from moving around too much. So as far as the dimensions I have a diagram of it. The total wire length you will need of number 14 gauge wire is 39.3 feet or 39 feet 4 inches a little over that just in case. And then uh, for the single loop length it's going to be 19.65 feet or 19 feet 7.8 inches or uh, the loop side works out to 4.9 feet which is 4 feet 11 inches. If you get a spreader um, that is uh, wood like a furring strip then cut it down to 7 feet 1.5 inches and then measure in one inch from each end and drill a hole uh, through the uh, longer length and then you'll need some ropes inside the antenna and that'll help to reduce some of the stress on the uh, antenna itself. So if you look at the uh, diagram you'll understand what I'm uh, talking about. It's uh, pretty obvious. And then I have a close-up of the uh, center insulator and how I did that. So anyway it uh, worked out pretty good. The SWR wasn't too bad at 1.3 at 50.1 which was the design frequency. I hope this works out good for you if you decide to build one. I'm sorry that I didn't get it finished uh, before the start of the uh, sporadic E season, but we should have some openings every now and then uh, for a little while yet. Uh, if not, uh, you can try it out real good next year. If you plan on using this outside on a permanent basis, then make sure that you waterproof the wooden spreaders. I hope this antenna works out really good for you and thanks for coming to the Radio Amateur Channel 73 and like and subscribe.